Uh, hello and welcome to Minecraft AI's 20th of August Developers Inc. So, uh, we've had a very busy and exciting week here. Um, the, uh, the, the good news, not to bury the lead, is that the, uh, the SJ201s, the custom hardware hat that uh, we've made for the, uh, for the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, based Mark II dev kits, um, has been verified to work, and this is awesome. So we've got uh, apparently nine working boards now, and uh, we're going to uh, get those over to the rest of our dev team and uh, start spinning up the enclosure and other related skills necessary to turn those uh, from a, a daughter board into a Mark II. So that's really, really cool. I'm very excited about that. Um, uh, in uh, other news, um, well, I don't know, what is the other news? Uh, Chris, how about you tell us, what's going on? That was kind of unfair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure, so um, I assume that means you're asking me for my status. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, so I spent the last couple of days um, getting all the, the coding changes made for the uh, schema change. That is all done. Um, I'm running a few final tests now, and I expect to call that done before I sign off for the day. I also went into Confluence and changed the schema um, documentation uh, to reflect what the current schema looks like. Um, so that's it's not very exciting, but that is certainly where I am. Um, so then on Monday, I will start um, with the script that will copy the uh, the files over from the temporary the temporary home on the Salini server to um, the data storage. So it's kind of it's kind of plugging along. Okay, great. Uh, it's going really well. No blockers. Great. Uh, also, um, Ken is totally right. That was completely unfair of me. Uh, but Chris is also going to be tackling the uh, doing the actual skill enclosure uh, development uh, for the SJ201. So, yeah, and on that, I know we this was brought up at a previous dev meeting, but um, you know, do we want to talk about skills versus enclosures versus you know the, the architecture of this for for this project, or we just want to do what we've been doing and fix that later? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, let's let's go on using the uh, the model that we have right now. Okay. We right. we will we will address this uh, later on, but it's not broken, so let's not mess with it. Oh yeah, okay. So so then my question on that would be: uh, right now there is a uh, Mark II skill, there is a Mark II Pi skill, there is a Mark II enclosure, and there is a Mark II. I think there's two different Mark II enclosures because of the different GUIs, possibly. So anyway, we should well, figure out. I think we'll have to make some decisions um, that, that we've kind of talked about but haven't really landed on yet, like um, <coughs> we're going to use and that kind of stuff, so I can bring up all the right things. Right, that's a good point. Well, we should have a discussion about that. Um, but I think that we should go ahead with the enclosure that is um, that. You know we're most comfortable with maintaining, which I think is the Kibi one for now, and um, and you know we should be clear with the community what our intentions are, and, and the intention is that the uh, the respeaker based Mark II is going to be deprecated in, in the near future uh, as soon as we can get the SJ two hundred one you know boards uh, up and running, and we you know we know that they're solid, so. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I, I think at some point we're gonna, you know, stop maintaining that, you know, that skill enclosure, and that'll be deprecated, and we'll just focus on the Mark II based on the the SJ two hundred one, right? Okay, so I'd probably build yeah. build a, a completely different skill for this um, Mark for the Mark II SJ two hundred one. We're gonna have buttons that we don't have, you know, on the current enclosure and, and that kind of stuff. So it might be might make sense to build a whole different thing. We can just deprecate the things. Okay. But okay. 
right. So yeah, yeah. that's me. Excellent. Thanks, Chris. Um, how about um, Ken? How about that? Uh, I'm just making a note real quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah, so it's been a good couple of days. I um, went back to the code and refactored it a bit to expand the capabilities of the channel, the channel being the connection between the upload server where the database data is selected and the training server where the actual training is done. Um, it was just very straightforward here. Here's a archive of training of a training data set. Go build it. Now it's more, um, here's the hyperparameters I want you to use. Um, it could be a partial or a full. Partial meaning don't bother looking for new training data. Use the training data you got. Just use these new hyperparameters. Uh, and then I also, uh, so I have those two paths. Um, you know, full train, kind of partial train with the existing data just changed by for parameters so that in the future, if we want to use that capability, we can. Uh, I then laid out the schema um, for, the, for the precise model database and um, went to put it into the MariaDB and then learned that I didn't have the root password, so I chased that down a little bit. But I now have that, so I should be able to get that going. And so by Monday, it should be saving all the runs in the database uh, with all their hyperparameters. Um, and, and in this case, hyperparameters include everything. So it's also going to have a reference to the manifest file, and it's also going to have the value that was sent over or that the, that the training data set was built with, with regarding the split, the ratio between training and validation. So that's not fixed. So it could be 80%, mm -hmm. 75%, whatever. Um, but the point being that there's enough data in that database that you could reproduce the model. Um, because I don't know that I want to actually save the .pb and .pb param files, maybe. Um, I could store them in there, too, as a blob. I don't know if it's necessary. What's more important about this database is that the hyperparameters and the test results of a model built with those hyperparameters are stored. So later you can select all the hyperparameters, cluster it, and have a half a chance at figuring out what the relationships between the hyperparameters need to be. I have discovered that the hyperparameters tend to perform better when they're prime numbers. So there's that. <laughs> um, that seems random. Yeah, no, it's, it's actually common that primes tend to work a lot better in machine learning algorithms because it doesn't give it the chance to take cut corners down low. <laughs> trying to like, you know, say, well, let me find the closest, you know, that's divisible by two and cut them in half. That's no, not going to happen. So <laughs> it's, it's just something I've learned over the years. Anyway, um, so yeah, so by Monday, we should be having that database getting populated. Hopefully, uh, I will get a uh, Mark II on Sunday. Thank you, Derek. And I will get right on this yes, no bug because it seems like it should have been addressed a long time ago, uh, but we probably didn't have a lot of use of it. But I assume as we start scaling, we will, and so it's going to become more important. Um, so I'll look at that. And then I've also been helping out on the uh, Mattermost and the forums, trying to pick up the slack while Giz is out until Monday. So I've helped two or three people now with wake word issues, and I'm not sure if that's a result of the 20, the 20 point X release or if it's because some of these people are just trying these things with really strange stuff, like the guy today was using a, um, a webcam microphone. Uh, that wasn't working too well for him. And then the other fellow I was talking to was running on a Pine phone, which is, is one of, it's near and dear to my heart. I know the rock chip very well, um, but the Pine phone, unlike the Pine 64, is not the system on a chip and it's actually underpowered. So. Um, doesn't surprise me. And some of the other community members actually pointed out that Precise is consuming over 60% CPU on the Pine phone. Um, and then they were like, well, we really should get that pull request for TensorFlow Lite. And I sympathize with them. And uh, that is on the radar, but a little bit, a couple of bands out. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what I've been working on. Awesome. Thanks for that update. Uh, Derek, uh, how are things going? Design land. Good, good. 
just a little history, Ken. We did explore a rock chip based design uh, before we before the Pi 4 came out because the Pi 3 we were like, yeah, it's not quite powerful enough. Um, anyway, Pi 4 is better than the rock chip, but the rock chip system on the chip is not bad. I've actually, you know, ported Android to it and it runs fine. Um, yeah, yeah, it was interesting. Like there was like a four plus two kind of thing where they had uh, a quad core plus um, two other, it was like a, not quite a six cores, but yeah, it was interesting architecture. Yeah, the um, system on the chip one is, is really good because it has everything built in, HDMI to USBs, it has all of its audio and video processing built into it. Um, it's, it's pretty powerful and then you don't have to worry about the whole interfacing the components because it's a system on a chip and they do that for you. Uh, and then it has, you know, the, uh, the, the specialty CPUs. So there's the low power one for, you know, background stuff and the high power one for foreground stuff. But yeah, I, I think the Pi 4 is a better choice, just so you know. Yeah, plus everyone, you know, it's got the, the broad community support because it's so, so popular. Um, yeah, so uh, what I've been up to, I've got, so I got that device off to Kin. Um, I also sent off an enclosure to Kevin um, that had an audio chamber in it um, so that he can, uh, it's a la the laser cut, laser cut enclosure that we're going to start off with. Um, those only take like maybe an hour and a half to put together all together, whereas a 3D printed version can take several days of printing to get all the parts. So it sounds like with the success we've had um, that I'm going to need to make uh, quite a few more of those. Thankfully, I've already got two done. So I will get one um, assembled and put, to, uh, put together for Chris as soon as I get boards from Kevin. So he's going to ship those um, pretty soon, I think, maybe even tomorrow. So when I get those in, uh, yeah, I'll get one packaged up and sent over to Chris as soon as I can. Um, other than that, uh, I've done a little bit of work on what will be the 3D printed design. And um, a lot of my time in the last two days has been dedicated towards some slide deck um, stuff for the fundraising effort. Um, so yeah, no blockers for me. I think I've got everything updated. Um, I think I did update that. I, I only just did it today, Ken. I updated the the uh, audio uh, services issue on first boot up to, I tagged you in it and I moved it into the Mark II um, uh, on Jira, so. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I got both tickets. Cool. Hey, Derek, we're going to have to talk a little bit about um, screen design as well, since we'll have the horizontal screen instead of the vertical screen, how the, right. the existing screens will have to change. Yep, yeah, that's going to be a bit of work. Um, I don't know if in the short term we can do something like just stretch it or, you know, something quick and dirty that uh, will make my eyes bleed. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, yeah, we need, to, we need to fix it for real eventually. <clears throat> That's, uh, that's it for me, guys. OK, great. Um, well, this seems like a lot, of, a lot of good stuff happening this week. Um, so we're right now in the middle of our sprint. We're going to continue next week with the same sprint, right? Uh, but for Monday, uh, let's go through and make sure we've updated all those tickets um, just so that we can check our progress. And uh, we'll review that uh, on Monday. Is there anything else that uh, people want to add? before we sign off here. No? All right. Well, when things are going well, I guess the meetings are short. So uh, thanks very much. Enjoy your weekends, uh, you know, whether you're working on the, the Mark II or, or not. Uh, and uh, I'll uh, talk to you all on Monday. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. See you. Good weekend, everybody. Bye.